I almost said good morning, but it's good evening. And nice to see you all here. And um, thank you for being here. And a couple other uh, uh, thanks for an order. I want to make sure we thank the choir for the great music all during Advent, including the cantata last week. Uh, I want to thank Ellen uh, Anderson for the wonderful decoration. She really made things look very festival. Thank uh, Festive. I want to thank Paul Kiner, who's doing the reading at the first service, as he usually does, and Craig will be here at 11 o'clock. I want to welcome all the people watching virtually um, online tonight, and this service will be online when you get home. And the, the advantage to watching this at home after it's already um, recorded, you can skip right through the sermon. But don't tell anyone that <laughs> too far ahead. But um, Anyway, so the 11 o'clock service will be live, but not on, uh, online. So I think, oh, I want to thank Scott Hunter, too. He always makes it possible for us to have the uh, a light on the Advent wreath that originates um, in Bethlehem, in the Middle East, not in Pennsylvania, and um, it always makes uh, things very special. And I want to thank uh, this service. We've got... Um, uh, Jim uh, Goonan is ushering, Lydia Peake is ushering, Dana Roby is ushering, um, we got Rob and Kenny back there uh, running the equipment, uh, and that's Kerry, uh, Kenny's around somewhere, he can usher if we need him, so I think we're in good shape. So, um, let us, uh, anyone else with an announcement we should be making? Okay, we begin with the choir's intro. We gather for a birthday party, a birthday party of a little child born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago who stands as a great hope and center of humanity. His name is Jesus, and let us begin to worship him as we sing our opening carol, which is number 270. Here the prophet Isaiah foretells the coming of the Messiah to the Hebrew people. 
We recognize the references to the people of Israel held so long in bondage in Egypt. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation. Thou hast increased their joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, thou hast broken as in the day of Midian. For all the armor of the armed man in the tumult and the garments rolled in blood shall be for burning as fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this could be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, 
for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The next hymn is 277. Now it came to pass in those days there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world shall be enrolled. This was the first enrollment made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to enroll themselves, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and family of David, to enroll himself with Mary, who was betrothed to him, being great with child. And it came to pass that while they were there, the days were fulfilled and that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds in the same country, abiding in the field, keeping watch by night over their flock. And an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, 
Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men in whom he is well pleased. And it came to pass, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one unto another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found both Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known concerning the saying which was spoken to them about this child. And all that heard it wondered at the things that they have spoken unto them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these sayings, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, even as it was spoken unto them. Let us continue to worship as we share our morning and, uh, or even in this case, evening gifts.
Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. And gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written through the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, land of Judah, art in no wise least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come forth a governor who shall be shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod privily, called the wise men, and learned of them exactly what time the star had appeared. And they sent them, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search exactly concerning the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word, that I also may come and worship him. And they, having heard the king, went their way. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And they came into the house and saw the young child with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. And opening their treasures, they offered unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned by God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness has never mastered it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for a witness, to bear witness to, for the light, that all men through him might believe. John was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was not in the world. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as did receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of God, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we all received the grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man had seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Oh, it was a great honor to have Paul Kiner do the readings at the first service, and Craig Anderson at the second there. Just uh, wonderful readers. Well, 
This is a festive season, always a special night. But there is, as I had the radio on on the way down here, kind of a sad celebrity piece of news today. I don't know if you've heard this, but um, I heard on the radio coming down here that it was announced. I don't know why celebrities announce these things, but uh, uh, there's, there's been a celebrity divorce. Frosty the Snowman has announced he's divorcing his wife. And they have a news conference, you know, the usual kind of thing. And uh, some reporter said, well, Frosty, why are you divorcing your wife? He said, she's a total flake. <laughs> kind of a cruel remark, but we won't get into that in any depth. <laughs> some people are just getting that, but I, <laughs> if you just leave it alone, it'll melt away, so it'll be a... <laughs> Well, Christmas Eve is a magical night. Uh, it's a time of beautiful music, uh, a time of beautiful decorations, a time of wonderful readings from the Bible and from other places, um, a time of wonderful people, all of you, that uh, many of whom we don't see too often during the year and who live far away, and it's just wonderful to see everybody, and a time of um, stories, stories, including the scriptural stories. But then we have The Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which is a wonderful story. The great movie, It's a Wonderful Life, uh, is a Christmas story. All the movies about Santa, including, uh, what is that, uh, Santa on 34th Street? Is that the best? Miracle on 34th Street. That's one of the great ones. Um, and if you, if, you, if you really like Christmas stories, all you have to do is leave your, leave your television set to the Hallmark Channel and they're 24 hours a day, about seven months of the year, but that's another story. But there are a lot of wonderful Christmas stories. And Advent, the four weeks before Christmas, prepares us as Christians, as we light the candles down on our uh, wreath down here, the Advent wreath, symbolizing hope, faith, joy, peace. All of these are four central tenets of Jesus' life and teachings. And uh, shortly, during the uh, singing of Silent Night, we will light the center candle, uh, the Christ candle. And then we'll invite you to light your candle on the way out the door and take that light out into a world that is in great need of it. But the four central tenets of Jesus' teachings, hope, even in the darkest of times, God gives us hope. Faith, faith that we don't just live on a planet uh, spinning around and we live a certain amount of time and then we're gone and uh, things aren't looking good. But faith tells us there is a God who cares, a God who loves, a God who forgives, and a God who promises to always be with us. Uh, here on earth and somewhere or other in what is known as heaven, in a different place. Joy, we find joy on Christmas Eve in family, in friends, in uh, memories, both old memories and new memories. Joy, uh, family, friends, memories, music, uh, it's incredible. And finally, peace, inner peace. And in the possibility of peace um, in a war-torn world and a divided homeland. You see, Christmas is a gift. It's a gift from God, a time of unparalleled charity, uh, especially shown in hoping those in need. And I'm going to share with you a card I got this week. I don't know if she's here tonight or not. Uh, but this is from Candy Woodbury. But she mailed it to our house, but addressed it to many people. And if you've ever gotten a card from Candy Woodbury, you have some idea what to expect here. Uh, Dear Woody and Barbara, the session and the choir and the food gals, Kim and Colleen, that's the food for the food baskets we gave out. And kids' gifts, 
Barbara, Katie, um, Kenny, and Cheryl, and uh, whoever else I'm forgetting. Wow, what a crescendo this week has been. Food baskets for 40 plus, turned out to be 42 families. Um, Cheryl's class, that's Cheryl Dankhouse, who taught a class uh, all about Joseph, who doesn't get the amount of attention that the author of the book they were using thinks he deserves, and I think the author was right. Um, the month of December regular services, um, good cheer, and to top it off, the choir's efforts at um, showing a true beauty and a special mood at the cantata with their music last Saturday, and pie in capital letters. <laughs> I think what folks in this church really need is a great big rest and to rest on their laurels because we've proven it again and again this December. Uh, we've got them um, in spades. Devotion to something bigger than oneself. Um, my best to all for a good Christmas and a little snooze. Finally, Candy Woodbury. I thought that's for everybody. And that's what Christmas time is like, isn't it? I guess when she was uh, writing, writing there, she said 80-some kids. The final total of kids we got gifts for uh, was 99 kids, children and youth. Uh, I think that's an all-time record. Uh, and it just um, struck me that this time is so special. As my, many of you know, I'm a bit of a baseball fan. It's like a baseball game. Uh, God has loaded the bases for us. And he wants us to hit a grand slam out of the park, a grand slam homer. Um, and how do we do that? By trying to live lives as God's disciples. Uh, that can be a grand slam for not only each one and every one of us, but for God's world, which is very important. Um, and if we strike out, as we do many times, that's okay. God sends us back up the home plate and says, try again and keep on trying to spread my love, not just in word, but in deed. Christmas Eve is a night of great possibilities. Some incredible things have happened on Christmas Eve, probably um, one that I should mention that many of you heard, and I see some of the Nixon family here. Um, boy, Dave Nixon gave me a book several Christmases ago now, all about um, the Christmas Eve truce that occurred in the midst of World War I and the lines in Europe. The officers in the services were not in favor of what happened, but the, the soldiers were, the grunts, if you will, and they put down their guns on Christmas Eve and they walked out of their trenches in Europe. And the Germans and the Allied soldiers met each other, shook hands, sang carols, and exchanged gifts. They didn't go shopping, and they didn't have uh, Amazon coming to the door, but they had a few things they could exchange. Chocolates. Chocolates. Cigarettes. That's before we knew how bad they were for you. They exchanged those. And they stopped fighting for 24 hours. That, that is an amazing story. The rest of the story is they picked up fighting and killing each other afterward, but that is a remarkable story. It shows the power of Christmas uh, for each one of us. And the power um, is with us tonight. It's a night of great possibilities. Can you imagine what would happen if the world um, just practiced the simple things of hope and faith and joy and peace. Wow. As uh, it's possible, and tonight's the night that we remember that. It's an opportunity for all of us as we take that candlelight that began in Bethlehem and take it out into a dark and very cold world this evening, but we take it into our everyday lives 
has great possibilities for all of us to be better people and great possibilities to make the world a better place. So I will close these, um, these thoughts uh, with the words of a poem that we read a couple years ago, and I think it's just incredibly powerful. It's Amazing Peace, a Christmas poem by Dr. Maya Angelou, who was, um, I believe, the Poet Laureate when she wrote this in 2005. Think of the possibilities in this poem. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes, and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Floodwaters await us in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow, falls upon snow, to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening. We question ourselves. What have we done to so affront nature? We worry, God, are you there? Are you there, really? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor, come the way of friendship, it is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence, and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Floodwaters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulder of our aged as they walk into their sunsets. Hope spreads around the world, brightening all things, even hate, which crouches breeding in dark corridors. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first, it is too soft. Then, only half heard, we listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now. It is louder louder than the explosion of bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for, not just the absence of war, but true peace, a harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We, Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist and Muslim, say, come, peace. Come and fill us and our world with your majesty. We, the Jew, the Janus, the Catholic, and the Confucian, implore you to stay with us a while. Stay with us so that we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time, a halting of hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religions of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust we shout with glorious tongues at the coming of hope. All the earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We, angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at our world and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at each other then into ourselves, and we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, peace, my brother, peace, my sister, peace, my soul. May we take that peace with us as we depart into the night and try to live it 
each and every day, making both ourselves, our villages, our families, and our world better places. And let us bow together in prayer. Gracious God, it is not easy to hit a grand slam home run. It certainly hasn't been for the Red Sox this year, Father, as you know. And yet, we know that Christmas Eve, you have loaded the bases with all good things for all of us. Help us to step up to the plate and do the best we can to take your love expressed in the candles of the Advent wreath and in the stories about Jesus and in the spirit that is with us tonight and to hit a home run with them, making the world in which we live a more Christ-like place. Help us to learn to honor those we disagree with. Help us learn to love those who we may now call enemies. Help us to truly be your children and our brothers and sisters to one another, regardless of where we live, the color of our skin, our religious understandings, and all the things that separate us. May we be united by your love, because you are a father who loves all your children. Help us do that. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. And as we prepare to uh, light our candles, the light of Bethlehem, we sing our closing carol, which is Silent Night, number 253. Oh,
Now go forth into the world in peace and be of good courage and render to no one evil for evil. Support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all of God's children. And may God bless us in the words of Tiny Tim, each and every one. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs>